The Sloth Investor's Bite-Sized Summary of Enough by Jack Vogel. Regular viewers of my podcast will know that The Sloth Investor is a big fan of the late Jack Vogel, the founder of Vanguard, the investment management company, and the man credited with creating the first index fund. In Enough, Jack Vogel distills over a half century of observations about the stock market and life in general into this enlightening book. Summary point one. Too much speculation, not enough investment. In enough, Jack Bogle makes a key distinction between speculating and investing. For Bogle, investing is all about the long-term ownership of businesses. Naturally, therefore, he is dismissive of speculation. For him, speculating is exactly the opposite of investing. It is focused on the short term, for example, trading. The emphasis that Jack Bogle placed on time influenced the Sloth Investor's decision to include time as one of my five bedrock principles of investing. For Bogle, investing is underpinned by sound economics while speculating is driven by emotions. He writes, It is economics that controls long-term equity returns. The impact of emotions, so dominant in the short term, dissolves. Summary point two, the perils of market timing. Rewind this video for a few seconds, and you'll note that the fourth bedrock principle is time in the market, not timing the market. The chief reason is because none of us possess a crystal ball. Of course, if one could accurately predict the exact moment when the stock market was about to rise or fall, it would make investing a lot easier. However, as we know, this is not possible. Jack Vogel firmly didn't believe that market timing worked. And enough, he writes the following about market timing. I don't know anyone who can do it successfully, nor anyone who has done so in the past. Heck, I don't even know anyone who knows anyone who has timed the market with consistent, successful, replicable results. It is difficult enough to make even one timing decision correctly, but you have to be right twice. For the act of, say, getting out of the market implies the act of getting in later and at a more favorable level. So, if Jack Bobel didn't believe in market timing, what did he believe in? Well, quite simply, Jack Bogle believed in the notion of staying the course. Indeed, that's the title of a book that Bogle wrote on the story of Vanguard and the indexing revolution. Summary point three, too much complexity, not enough simplicity. If we consider most domains of life, to be successful requires a significant degree of complexity. Whether it's learning to play an instrument or perhaps even acquiring a professional certification for your chosen occupation life can become complex. However, for Jack Bogle, simplicity was the key to successful investing. In enough, he states, My career has been a monument not to brilliance or complexity, but to common sense and simplicity. Jack Bogle recognized the costs associated with a complex approach to investing and the effect that these costs have on the overall return of the individual investor. He is especially scornful of financial institutions that provide such complex and costly financial products. Regarding these institutions, he writes, They have a large incentive to favor the complex and costly over the simple and cheap, quite the opposite of what most investors need and ought to want. Summary point four, brain drain. Despite being someone with a firm footing in the financial management industry, Jack Bogle expressed caution concerning the inclination of many young people to enter the field of finance. Indeed, early on in the book, he writes about the brain drain caused by the tendency of many young professionals to pursue a life on Wall Street. He states, Inevitably, the enormous incomes received by hedge fund managers in the recent era and the staggering salaries and bonuses paid to investment bankers have inflamed the imaginations of many of the nation's graduates of our business schools and made Wall Street the preferred destination for their careers. Perhaps I should be cheered by such news. This is, after all, a calling to which I have devoted my entire career. I fear, though, that the motivation of too many of those rushing into finance is more aligned with what they can get from society than what they can give back to it. Summary point five, the short supply of wisdom. Jack Bobel was fascinated by the 18th century and its focus on reason. For Bobel, the irony of the information age is the pervasive lack of wisdom present within so many. In enough, he writes, With Wikipedia at our fingertips and Google waiting online to serve us, we are surrounded by information, but increasingly cut off from knowledge. Facts, or more often, factoids, are everywhere. But wisdom, the kind of wisdom that was rife in the age of the nation's founding fathers, is in short supply. What are your thoughts about what Jack Bobo has to say about wisdom? Despite the abundance of information available to us, is he right to argue that, somewhat ironically, wisdom is in short supply? What do you think? 
If you got a spare moment, I'd love to read your thoughts in the comment section for this video. Summary point six, creating value for society. One of the great things about Enough is the fact that it's not a book that's entirely about finance. As I hope has become clear by now, the book is crammed full of actionable insights about life itself. In particular, although he was a monumental figure in the history of finance, Jack Bogle wisely wrote about the mistake many people make in chasing financial wealth. For him, financial prosperity represented a flawed measure of wealth. Instead, he was more concerned with the value that each of us can create for society. In enough, he states, We'll be better human beings and achieve greater things if we challenge ourselves to pursue careers that create value for our society, with personal wealth not as a goal, but as the byproduct. In this regard, we can see a parallel between what Bogle states here and the words of President John F. Kennedy during his inaugural address in 1961. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Okay, that's the Sloth Investor's summary of enough by the late Jack Bogle. Which summary point resonated the most with you? If you have time, please let me know in the comment box below. In episode 27 of the Sloth Investor podcast, I interviewed Eric Balchunas, author of the fantastic book, The Bogle Effect. Check out that interview for more insights about Jack Bogle, the man that the Sloth Investor considers to be the most significant figure in the history of investing. You'll find a link to that interview in the description to this video. To keep up to date with the latest content from the Sloth Investor, whether this be my book reviews, my podcast, or other video content, please remember to subscribe to this channel.